Sweet. So next thing, last little part of hydrostatics is dealing with a hydraulic jack. So if I'm dealing with a hydraulic jack, now you guys, when you think of a jack, you probably think of like the little contraption that you jack up your car. So, but here I'm thinking of like the commercial so type of jack that maybe you see that your mechanic has. So that might lift up the entire car all at once sort of thing. So which side of this jack is going to be doing the lifting of some heavy object and which side will I be actually pushing on? Yeah, I'm going to actually push down on this side. And as I push down on it, it's going to lower the fluid. And because I'm lowering the fluid on this side, what's going to have to happen? Fluid's going to have to rise on the other side. So, and that's the basis of your jack. So by pushing down on this side, it has to rise up on this side. So now it doesn't seem like we've gained anything. So I push down here, it pushes up here. Well, I can't lift a car he here. I can't generate enough force to lift a car here. So why should I expect to be able to lift a car here? So we're going to deal with what's called Archimedes, I'm sorry, not Archimedes, but Pascal's principle. So what Pas Pascal discovered is that when you have an enclosed fluid, only applies to an, a completely enclosed fluid. So not like a lake, because that's not enclosed, but something completely enclosed, like in the middle of this jack, it's full of a fluid, but it's not open to the, to the outside atmosphere at all. And so in this case, in a completely enclosed fluid, so when you increase the pressure on a completely enclosed fluid, that pressure acts on every particle in that fluid and every wall of the container universally. So by pushing down on this side, I'm increasing the pressure. But I'm not just increasing the pressure here. I'm increasing the pressure everywhere. And so the key is, it's about pressure. What's the definition of pressure? Force per area. And so if I increase the pressure here, it increases the same amount everywhere in this fluid, including right here. And so the pressure applied here will equal the pressure resulting over here. That's the key. So F over A equals F over A, or F over A equals a constant, however you want to look at it. That's what Pascal discovered. And so in this case, the idea is this. How is pressure related to force? Again. But how is it related to force? Proportional. proportional, directly proportional. But how is it related to area? Inversely, and that's the key. And so I'm going to push on the small side, because that's the smart thing to do. By pushing where there's a small area, a small area is going to lead to a greater pressure. And so then when that pressure applies to a large area, so notice with a larger area, to keep this ratio constant, it's going to also have to have a larger force as well. And that's the idea. I push on the small side, because a small force on a small area will turn into a large force on a large area. Cool. So that's the idea here. Let's look at an example. So in this case, uh, looking at example number eight. Example number eight has this lovely drawing. So we have a radius of five centimeters on the small side here. We've got a radius of 250 centimeters on the large side of the jack here. And the question is, how much force must be applied to this small side if we're going to be able to lift a 250 kilogram engine on the large side? So if we look here, what force do I need to be able to lift this 250 kilogram engine over here. What force must be present to lift that? Weight. It's weight. What is its weight? 250 kilograms is the mass. What's its weight? Times yeah, times gravity. So in this case, that's my F2. We know that. What's my area? Notice it's a circular surface here. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared, pi r squared and we know the r. So I know A2 using that R for pi R squared. And the area over here, A1, I also know the radius, circular there as well, pi R squared yet again. And the only thing I don't know is the force that must be applied on this side. So let's set this up. So in this case, F1 over A1 is pi. And what radius are we using here? Awesome, 0.05. 
five meters. Let's use SI units. Turns out, as long as we use the same units on both sides, they'd cancel, but I just recommend using SI all the way around. So, and what's F2 here again? 250 kilograms times gravity. So we got to lift to counteract its weight. Okay. And then what's the area on this side? Good. 2.5 meters squared. Cool. And from here on out, it's plugging and chugging. So if you look at this one other way, we can actually do this one in our head if you want to. So if you notice, how much bigger is the radius on this side? How much bigger is the radius on this side? 50 times bigger. And with a 50 times bigger radius, how much bigger would its pi r squared be? Look over there, just the r is 50 times bigger. So how much would 50, how much would pi r squared be bigger on this side? 2,500 times bigger. It's 50 squared bigger. So if, if the area is 2,500 times bigger on this side, to keep this ratio constant, the force is also going to be 2,500 times bigger. And we figured out that that force was 250 times 9.8. And so the force on this side is going to be 200 or 2,500 times less than whatever that is. So ultimately, when you do this equation, it'll work out the same way. Anybody get me that force? So the place where students often screw this up is they think that, oh, bigger area means smaller force. Don't go there. Bigger area, bigger force. Smaller area, smaller force. Cool. One other thing to note here. As I push down on this column of water on the left, the column of water on the right is going to rise up, but not as fast. Why not? Yeah, there's more area. And the idea is this, the volume I displace on this side as I push down, the volume of fluid I displace will equal the volume of fluid I will displace on this side. What's the volume of a cylinder? So it turns out it's pi r squared times h. But the key is it's not that it's pi r squared times h. So it's area times height. Or in this case, I'm going to call it area times the depth at which you're pushing it down or something like that. And so since area times depth, that's volume. And so the volume change on this side equals the volume change on this side. And that's why these are going to be equal. How far I push down is d1. How far the other side rises up would be d2. These have to be equal. The volume it decreases on this side has to be the same as the volume increase on this side. So you may get a question that says, well, if I push down on this side you know, one meter, how far would that raise it on this side? And that's what we'd be using right here. 